beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, as we prepare for our Thanksgiving next Sunday, it is important for each and every one of us to truly understand what we are giving thanks for. And it is also very important for us to make sure that we understand why we give thanks to our Lord God and how we should prepare ourselves so that our thanksgiving will be worthy and accepted by our Lord God in heaven. We do not give thanks to our Lord God simply because we have been accustomed to this or it's a tradition or we're just used to it and seems to be that we will just do it for the sake of giving thanks to our Lord God. Giving thanks to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ is a divine duty for God's people, but in order for it to be worthy and not to be in vain, it should be in accordance to the will of our Lord God in heaven. Now, when we say giving thanks or thanksgiving, it is easy to say that we can thank someone or we can feel thankful if what we have received is something that we are thankful for because it made us happy, because we consider it as a blessing, as an advantage or a gift in our life. But what if what we are going through is actually trials? What if we are suffering at this very moment? What if God's people or those chosen by our Lord God are actually going through hardships? And it is actually true to a lot of people. Do we still give thanks to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ? Is there any reason for us to be thankful or to even give thanksgiving? What is the value of thanksgiving to every true member of the Church of Christ as taught by our Lord Jesus Christ? Let us read what is written here in Matthew 11, 28 up to 30, this is what is recorded. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Our Lord Jesus Christ is talking to his disciples, to his followers, and he is giving an invitation to come to him, all those who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Now, what is the advantage if we come to our Lord Jesus Christ, especially those who are going through trials, those who are going through hardship and sorrow, our Lord Jesus Christ said, I will give you rest. You know, for a person who is going through a lot of things, a lot of problems, trials, or tribulations in life, it is a very stressful moment in his life. Filled with anxiety, uncertainty, probably is not able to sleep well, eat well, his health is probably affected. His mind is restless because of all the things that are going through his mind about his situation. But if we follow our Lord Jesus Christ and those who carry heavy burdens in their life because they're going through trials, we can find rest. We can find solace from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, another person may even say, brother, I am fortunate. Because I have been able to overcome my trials in life. And I am steadfast in my resolve, even if I go through hardships. Now, what about other people who we know are going through adverse situations in their lives right now? What does the Bible say about that? Let us read Galatians chapter 6 and the verses 1 up to 3. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful 
not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens, and in this way, obey the law of Christ. And if, if you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Now, did you notice, beloved brothers and sisters, how the apostles taught Christ's followers to handle themselves carefully and delicately in our conduct when we see our fellow brethren who may have been overcome by sin? It is not in any way for anyone to be judgmental or to look down or talk down to anyone who may be going through sin in their lives because they have probably fallen into temptation. That's why Apostle Paul said, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly, meaning who have the divine light in their lives, who are able to follow the teachings of our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, that we should gently and humbly help that person. Sometimes <clears throat> these two is absent in a person's attempt to help his fellow brethren or to reprimand somebody whom we know is going through sin. We sometimes find ourselves, or even we don't even notice it, that we become judgmental. And when we talk to others, we don't talk to them gently, not considering that we might offend them or cause them to hurt even more, to hurt their feelings. Sometimes a person might forget to talk to another person humbly, putting himself in a high pedestal, thinking that he is not prone to the same temptation that the other person may be uh, overcome with, that we talk to that person as if he is holier than the other person. Why is this, beloved brothers and sisters? Why did the apostles caution each and every brother and sister in the faith to be careful and to be gentle and to be humble when we talk to our fellow brethren who may have been overcome with sin? Because according to Apostle Paul, we too may also fall into the same, same temptation or even worse. There are some people who have been so judgmental and quick to judge others only to find themselves in the end falling into the same temptation or in the same sin or even worse. Therein, where do they find themselves? How can they even look other people in the eye knowing that before they were the ones reprimanding other people for falling to that sin and then they find themselves in the same situation? That's why if there are others who are going through burden, going through trials, going through hardship, we should be empathic. We should share other people's burden. We should help them in any way we can. Now, what if they don't listen to us? What if they don't want to, to follow? Even if we are already advising them what to do, giving them the words of our Lord God to serve as their guidance but still they want to do what they want to do and do not want to repent or to change let's continue reading what's written in galatians 6 4 up to 5 pay careful attention to your own work for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else for we are each responsible for our own conduct Beloved brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul says, Be care pay careful attention to your own work. You know, we try to help others. We try to give them advice. We try to guide them, each and every one of us trying to help one another. But more importantly, we should pay careful attention to our own work, to our own lives. There is no need to compare ourselves with others, with anyone else. Why? Because ultimately, on the day of judgment, when our Lord Jesus Christ returns, we will be all responsible 
for our own conduct, for our own salvation. So if we commit sin and do not repent, and it's not forgiven, then we will not receive the grace of salvation. But despite all of the temptation in this world, and we strive to continue following God's teachings and His commandments, then we are all also will benefit in receiving in the grace of salvation come judgment day. So how should we live our lives then that can be worthy of our Lord God as being true members of the church of Christ? Let's read Ephesians chapter 4 and the verses 1 up to 4. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, this verse, according to Apostle Paul, who is a prisoner for serving our Lord, is admonishing each and every one of us that when we live our life, we should lead a life worthy of our calling. So this is pertaining to those who were called by our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been called by our Lord God for a specific reason, for a purpose or a role that we should all play in our lives. As we Fulfill this calling, beloved brothers and sisters. Again, we have been admonished to always be humble and gentle. We should never think of ourselves better than other people, higher or holier than others. That our lives matter more than others. We all have been called by our Lord God. But in order for us to live a life worthy of our calling, we should be patient with each other. We are brothers and sisters in the faith. Imagine blood relatives themselves, brothers and sisters by blood, have misunderstandings, even fight with each other, let alone people who are not even blood-related, who have different opinions and principles in life, who grew up differently, have different perspectives, it is a very big reason for us to may not share the same insights as other people and thereby having misunderstandings and miscommunication. But this, you, um, having these misunderstandings, having these um, problems with other people can be ab avoided if we are patient with each other. If we can have that allowance for each other's faults. Because none of us can ever claim that we are perfect. But if we have that uh, level of tolerance or patience, giving allowances for other people's faults, the way we also have our own faults, with love, we will be able to overcome them. With love, we will be able to understand one another, care and love for one another. Why? Because we are all here, not because we are perfect, not because we are better than other people, but because we are united in spirit, in faith in our Lord God in heaven. Now, if we are united for a vested interest, then that is just something that is bound to fail from the very beginning. Why? Because if their vested interest is money, power, influence, popularity, greed, then that is not the work of our Lord God. But if we are bound and united in faith and in spirit, then we can have that love to be able to understand one another, to care for one another, have that allowance for each other's fault. Now, another person might even feel that but this is pertaining to those who are called by our Lord God in heaven. Brother, I don't feel that I'm being called. I mean, who am I compared to other people who maybe 
you know, more worthy than myself. I I consider myself, you know, below other people because I don't see myself being called by our Lord God. If we compare ourselves to others, we might feel that way. But what does the Bible say about each and every one of us who have been called by our Lord God? Ephesians chapter 4 and the verse is 7. But to each one of us, again, to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Each and every one of us, beloved brothers and sisters, believe it or not, received grace from our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now, what are the different gifts that God has given to his chosen people? Let's read 1 Peter 4, 10 up to 11. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, God has given each and every one of us a gift. And there are a lot of spiritual gifts. There are those who have been given the gift of speaking. You know, we probably know a lot of people who are very good speakers. People who are very eloquent when they speak. But then unfortunately, no matter how eloquent they may be, no matter how good of a speaker they may be, if they do not use this gift in helping others, in serving one another, then it will be in vain. Do you remember a lot of people we admire who are very good speakers, but then they use those gifts or skills given by God not to serve one another, but to serve themselves to serve their vested interests, to gain popularity or money or other material things in this world? Do we have the gift of helping others? You know, not everyone can be a good speaker, but we can help other people. If we have that gift as well, then do it not just for the sake of giving, but with all the strength and energy and life that God has given unto us. This is our divine duty. To God, not to waste the gifts or graces that God has given unto us. Now, what else is our divine duty to our Lord God? Romans 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. There are a lot of people, brothers and sisters, who are so brave to say that I'm willing to die for Christ. I'm willing to sacrifice my life to God. But the bigger question is, are you also willing to live for Christ? Are you also willing to live a life that is worthy of our Lord God in heaven? That is why our greatest sacrifice would be ourselves, our bodies, our life, and let it be a living and holy sacrifice. Because everything that we do that is according to the will of our Lord God, He will find acceptable. This is the true worship that we should give to our Lord God. So when we give thanks to our Lord God, even though we may have monetary uh, thanksgiving contributions, but ultimately, it is our life that our Lord God is looking at. How do we live our life? How do we conduct ourselves with other people? What do we do when we find out that there are others who are in need? There are those who are persecuted and oppressed. What do we do with our lives, the gifts that God has given unto us? Do we keep it for ourselves? 
Do we bury it underground? Do we let it remain stagnant? Or do we use it to glorify ourselves? That is not the way that our Lord God has taught his people. What else are the gifts that God has given to his chosen people that we should use in giving glory to our Lord God? Romans 12, 7 up to 8. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Now, I don't think anybody would even have an excuse anymore to say that, brother, I don't have a gift. Because we can be kind to others. You don't have to be mean. We don't have to be um, hateful or vindictive towards other people. We can be kind. And that is also a gift. There are those who have been given the ability to lead others. That's why we should be responsible when God has entrusted us with a role like this. And if, if we are to encourage others, be encouraging. You know, there are a lot of people when they speak to others, a lot of people find encouragement. They find solace. They find peace when they are able to talk to that kind of person. Do you know anybody that when you talk to that person, immediately all your energy drains out? As if that person is so depressing. It's all about problems. And in the end, you get discouraged even more. Stay away from those people. We should all be encouraging to other people. Our lives should be living examples as true members of the Church of Christ that go through a lot of trials in life. Yet here we are, still standing, still fighting, still helping other people, and still in the cause so that we may be able to serve others. If we have been given this gift, like if we are a teacher and we do not teach, then what is the point of giving us the things that we need in life? Our life, our health, our strength. If we do not fulfill our divine duty, then all of this will be in vain. But beloved brothers and sisters, as the Bible is teaching us the gifts, the graces from our Lord God that we have been given, in helping others, what should we be careful about and be very observant as admonished by Apostle Paul? Let us read what is written here in Romans chapter 12 and the verses 9 up to 12. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in your confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, this is the reason why we keep on praying. Why every day we have our committee prayers. Whether in Tagalog or in English, we have our Bible study, we have our worship services. Even though we're going through trials, Trials, we are patiently waiting for God's resolution, for his help. Because it is our hope, our confident hope that we are guided, protected, and taken care of by our Lord God in heaven. So because of that blessing, beloved brothers and sisters, we should share it with others. And when we love others, when we care for them, when we help them, it is not pretending to love them, but we really should love them. Genuine affection, not for posterity's sake, not for photo ops, just to take a picture and post it on social media. No, that's not the kind of helping others or loving others. It should be genuine because whether other people do not know about it or see it, our Lord God will know. And when we perform our duties to our Lord God, it should be enthusiastically. Not for the sake of saying we perform our duty 
We should not be lazy at all. Now, what is one of the indications that when we love or help other people, it would be the love and care toward our brothers and sisters that is genuine and sincere. Let's continue reading 13 up to 14. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Now, that is what separates God's people from those people who think that they are still God's people. When there are those who are in need, we eagerly help them. We practice hospitality. We are ready to do our part to help others. How about those people who cause us trouble, those who persecute and oppress us? When other people, when they experience that, they pray that God will perish them, make them perish or kill them. That's not how God's people is commanded. We should ask God to bless those who persecute us. Why? So that they may have a change of heart. Be able to repent and go back to our Lord God. Let us not pray that God will curse them, but rather that God will bless them and help them Get out of that situation. Take the, the darkness out of their heart and replace it with light. So if you belong to a group of people who prays to our Lord God to punish or, or make other people perish, make them die, that is not the teachings written in the Holy Scriptures. That is now a man-made rule. That is not what we do. That, that is not what is commanded by our Lord God. Now, other people might be saying, I'm, I'm ready to help others. I'm, I practice hospitality, brother. I'm ready to help those who are in need. But the problem is, what if those who are in need or those who approach you are the people you don't like? Or whom considers you as their enemies or, who, or whom you consider as your enemy. Maybe there is an exception. We shouldn't help them, let them perish, let them look somewhere else, or just let them suffer. Let's read what's written here in verse 20 up to 21. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So this is not revenge. To avenge ourselves, these people who are persecuting us and oppressing us, now that they are in trouble, I'll let them perish. I'll let them be hungry or thirsty. I don't care. Just let them perish. That is not what true members of the Church of Christ have been taught. We should not let evil dwell in our hearts. The same evil was that was in their hearts that led them to persecute and oppress other people. Rather, we should let good in our hearts conquer evil so that we may give glory to our Lord God. So that is why, beloved brothers and sisters, whether we are going through trials in life, whether we are receiving the bountiful blessings from our Lord God in our life, we, each and every one of us, have something to be thankful to our Lord God. It is our divine duty to worship our Lord God and give thanksgiving unto Him. Now, what about those others who also know the value of giving thanks to our Lord God, knows the value of worshiping, our Lord God, and doing good to others, yet they probably have this feeling that, you know, I, I have done my part. I have been very active in the church. I have, I have done more than other people. I think I have done enough. Let us read what's written here in Revelations chapter 2 and the verses 2 up to 3. I know all the things you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those who say they are apostles but are not. You have discovered they are liars. You have patiently suffered for me without quitting. Now, let's pause for a while. 
God knows everything that we have done in our life. The hard work, the patient endurance. We God knows that we did not stand for those people who are claiming to be of God but are actually liars. That they are actually evil people. We have patiently suffered and we did not quit and we did our best to the glory of our Lord God. But that is that enough? Let's continue reading. But I have this complaint against you. Next slide. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. Look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Now, beloved brothers and sisters, it is not for us to judge other people and see how they have fallen or what they have done before and what they are doing now. It is for us to be reminded by this verse. To serve as a wake-up call. Because it is only us who can see what have we been doing before in the service to our Lord God. Compare it to the present. What am I doing now in the service to our Lord God? Are we doing more before than now? Because it is a common complaint by our Lord God that we may have loved Him, but then we don't love Him the way we have loved Him before at first. Maybe our love for Him has died down, has mellowed out. Maybe it is going down. That is why we should reflect in our life, beloved brothers and sisters. Because if we don't, if we don't correct ourselves, then according to the verse that we have read, our lampstand or our light will be taken out. That is why we probably witness how other people who are very zealous, who have been very um, hardworking in the service to our Lord God, especially before, they were all with us. We were all together fighting for the cause. But then what happened? Slowly, one by one, they were shed away. Others were led astray. Others chose a different path. Others turned away. Others grow, grew cold in their faith. It is how our Lord God took out the light from their hearts. The lampstand. Why? Because they did not go back to our Lord God and love Him the way they have done before. How do we measure if we are still at par with what our Lord God wants from His people, especially now in our time? Let us read the last verse here in Isaiah 1.17. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans. Fight for the rights of widows. If we truly believe that we are giving thanks to our Lord God because we have been rendered worthy to belong to the very small remnant that our Lord God has set aside so that His church the body of Christ will not be completely turned away like Sodom and Gomorrah. Then if this is our faith, now this is how we measure what we are doing in our life in accordance to the will of our Lord God. Are we doing what is good, what is right? Are we seeking justice and helping those who are victims of injustices? Are we doing something to help those who are oppressed? The, the fatherless and the widows who are being persecuted and oppressed. Are we fighting a cause for them? Because our Lord God is constantly looking at each and every one of us. Let us continue to pray to our Lord God that we may be His instrument. The gift that He has given to each and every one of us. May we take care of it. Allow it to grow abundantly. So that when we care. And help those who are in need. We may do it generously. We may do it abundantly. To be able to give glory to our Lord God. Our journey may still be a long way, brothers and sisters. That is why there are those who were with us before. 
probably are no longer with us. There are those who are with us now who probably were not before, but they have been enlightened. Their eyes have been opened and they are now going back to our Lord God. And that is why we continue to pray for everyone. Those who have been overcome by sin, let us continue to gently and humbly help them back to repent to our Lord God. And those who may have been in darkness, let's pray to our Lord God to give them light so that each and every one of us will have the same opportunity to receive the grace of salvation come judgment day. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us continue to ask our Lord God to help us prepare for our thanksgiving so that as we prepare ourselves, as we prepare our offering, as we prepare our life in giving thanks to Him, may it be accepted, may it be worthy, and may it give glory to our Lord God in heaven. Let us all stand and we shall pray. Our merciful and loving Father, Father, you have blessed us to be able to offer a worship service unto thee this morning. And we praise and we glorify thy most holy name. And we know, our Father, that our being able to offer you this worship service is not because we are good, but it's because of your love and your mercy. Father, we have reached the last month of the year of 2022. And Father, it is only you that have watched over us and kept us safe that we may be able to stand here this morning and to say thank you, Father. And we, as we look back on the year, our Father, there have been so many trials in our lives, so many ups and downs, but Father, you have kept us. You have continued to give us that hope that encouragement that we need, that we are still here thanking you and abiding in your holy service. We ask you, Father, to please continue to grant unto your servants more faith, more understanding, so that we may be able to offer that true worship service unto the most holy name. We pray for our brethren, wherever they may be, that you would continue to watch over them especially those that are being oppressed, persecuted, those that are in hiding, separated from their families, and those that are in jail, we ask your Father to please look in on your servants and grant unto them the hope that they need, that they may be able to continue on fulfilling their obligations and serving the most holy name. Sometimes in this life, our Father, we do get weak, but we pray, our Father, that you would never remove our lampstand from those servants. Let us be able to continue on fulfilling our obligations in serving and glorifying the most holy name. We know, our Father, that you know our hearts and our minds. You know all about us and we ask you for command us that faith that we need that we may be able to overcome the trials of life and we'll be able to continue on serving you until the end of our lives and our fathers we prepare ourselves for our upcoming thanksgiving worship service you and we ask your father to cleanse our hearts and our minds of all unrighteousness so that we will be worthy to offer your worship service that is pleasing before thy most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would bless those of our brethren that they think that they don't have anything to give. We ask you, Father, to let them be able to live, to sacrifice, live the life that, they, that would please and glorify thy most holy name. We pray, our Father, for those of our brethren that are ill this morning, that you would watch over them and grant them the health that they need, that they may be able to continue to fulfill their obligations before the most holy presence. We pray for our brother that you have given the opportunity to teach your servants, 
Continue to watch over them that they may be able to have the things that they need in life so that they may be able to continue to lead us in a righteous way of serving and glorifying the most holy name. We truly believe, our Father, that you will be with us throughout our devotional prayers this week. We ask you, Father, to visit your servants, that we may be able to feel your presence and will be strengthened to continue on serving the most holy name. We truly believe, our Father, that you've heard our prayer this morning, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed, because we ask all of these things in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. the grace of salvation from our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.